It's Kim again. This is the project that I am tackling today. The window box. Initially, this box would have been considered full sun way back when we first built the house before this hydrangea. Maybe not quite full sun. Yeah, probably the afternoon. Probably from about two, two o'clock on. So I'm gonna plant more shade tolerant plants. I've gotten a hosta, which I have sitting in there. Um, I'll give you the details on that here in a minute. But uh, this box, ever since, so I had initially two cabbages. Um, and the cabbage on this end absolutely got huge, ready to be harvested. So I harvested that. Then I transplanted another little cabbage in there. Accessing this box, not easy little cabbage it's not taking off like I would like it to we have some coleus again that's in like what's in the other box and another cabbage um, these are all annuals except for the hosta so I'm going to put oh and there is a caladium back there so I'm going to put two ferns and a hosta that are perennial so that those will be three things that ideally will come back every year. So let me get my stuff around here. I have started already. I have um, Biotone Starter Fertilizer from Espoma that is wonderful for getting plants to start growing roots. It has this uh, mycorrhizae in it. And then because that box, the dirt never totally comes out of it, um, and it won't now that there's full-time perennials in there, I am going to recharge it so to speak with some Espoma organic land and sea compost so I need to get the two other plants and um, my little hand spade and you can see what I have to maneuver around to get in there all right, let's get started. Just as a little side note, look at all the, not sure if you can see, all the bumblebees on the Millennium Alliums. They are covered in bumblebees. So I'm gonna start by checking to see how many 
I have of what? These uh, Super Tunia Vista bubble gums. Um, I gotta see here. I'm trying to get in. <laughs> I gotta see how many I have in here all together. Because I would like to keep them in. The box itself wouldn't be full enough without um, with just the three perennials. Oh yeah, I see my, I forgot. I had put in a purple bell vine <laughs> and it was looking kind of uh, sickly down at the bottom, but this here, all of this is purple bell vine and it's looking very healthy actually it's trying to grow upwards which it is a climbing vine so using it as a trailing vine probably doesn't work out the best but i'm always trying new things Oops, stepped on a plant all right so i want this hosta in the middle it is Shadowlands Coast to Coast Hosta. Let's see if we can find the stats on it. Uh, yeah, I won't be doing that without my glasses for sure. <laughs> oh. Looks like it's going to grow thirty some inches tall, potentially. So about three feet tall, three feet wide, but it is going to be in a box. Um, so it won't grow to its full potential. Hardy to zone three, I think is what it said. So that will be, I'll put the stats up on the screen for you so you can know for sure. Um, hopefully we don't have any trouble with it uh, coming back after the winter. All right, so let's see if we can, uh, unwind this super tunia, which is very difficult to do with one hand. unbury this caladium because I think that is considered center and that's where my um, host is going to go. So I have decided that I'm going to take off um, one of these branches of the hydrangea because there really isn't any point to even filling the box if it doesn't show at all. And I don't think it's going to make it so much sun that it's not going to, that it'll burn these plants because these plants are for shade. So I just got some big loppers. And, um, yeah, don't think it, uh, anyway detracts from the look of the hydrangea because it's huge. And yet it opens up the window box so that we can access it and get to it better. Is it good? 
So the first thing I'm going to do is kind of deconstruct the box. Now that we have that hydrangea out of the way, I'm going to take the cabbage out first. Cabbage is totally edible, but we will uh, feed it to our chickens because that's what we do. one spot where I will put the one fern and then I'm going to take out this caladium because this is where the this is where the uh, hosta will go and I have to say I'm pretty much done with caladiums <laughs> These caladiums were planted way back in March. Uh, they do not like cold weather. They do not like even 50 degrees. So they are definitely more of a southern plant. Because we have lots of even 50 degree nights. So that just doesn't work for up here. So lesson learned, I won't plant any more caladiums. Now, I got the uh, compost to charge these boxes, but they actually, and I'm gonna put a little on top, but they actually have a fair, they have more dirt in them than I thought. I thought those roots on the plants I took out would um, seriously um, take out a lot of the dirt. Another thing for the chickens, but it really didn't. This spot over here could use, definitely use some more. But you can tell the difference in the amount of sun. So this super, there's two super tunias in here. This one on this side is way bigger than the one on this side, just because of the difference in the amount of sun that they receive. So next I'm gonna, and you, I also wanted to point out on this hosta how rooted in it is. It's been in this pot for quite some time, which is good, it's fine. It'll, it'll, it'll replant nice. I'm gonna move this for now, this coleus, because I'm going to, that's, I wanna space my permanent plants in here better all right so i gotta get my go. all right so i'm going to i'm just gonna get enough i'm gonna pull this out of the container so i can put the uh i'm gonna attempt <laughs> You can see how long this hosta, I'm not gonna be able to use this container obviously now to hold my compost, but. So that's really root bound. So typically when something is that root bound too, you wanna, I will actually cut with a knife some of these roots when I go to plant. Otherwise, they say it'll just keep rotating around they won't spread out well this is it has a lot of roots too but they're darker so and not obviously not as root bound as that these are called crested surf they almost look fake but i tried to get i like this look of the darker excuse me the foliage with the lighter and the more sun this hosta gets 
the more yellow color it will be. So. And yes, you should probably wear gloves. I just rarely ever do. Just don't want that to spill. So I'm going to put this, I'm going to plant the center one first so I can get a better idea. So I'm just going to dump that compost in there like that, mix it around with the dirt that's in there. And the dirt that's in here is just potting soil, basically, and compost that gets topped up every year to keep it healthy. Because the plants use the nutrition up every year. And if you've ever used a Biotone starter fertilizer, you'll know that it smells pretty bad. But most gardeners that I have watched say that it smells like success. So we'll go with that. Um, those pots have holes in them. This is a granulated type so it's just gonna fall through those holes is why I'm not putting it in those containers so I'm just gonna sprinkle so that when the roots get down in there and this is organic so one thing nice about organic is it's very difficult to burn plants with organic fertilizers. So, I'm just gonna literally break up these roots to get them so they wanna grow in the right direction. You really, there's really no right or wrong unless you cut your finger. <laughs> that would be a wrong. And typically anywhere where you kind of like quote scar a root it will start growing out um, baby roots in that area so tightly bound so I'm just gonna go pretty much with what I have so just really loosened up especially the bottom it gives them a chance to spread out and grow So this I'm, I'm considering to be like the centerpiece of this window box. So eventually that will be, hopefully, you know, if it makes it through the winter, we'll Uh, 
just going to kind of stick this behind so that it helps with the looks of it and beef up the, the other side, which is a little bit lamer. This stuff will all settle in and look better as time goes by. All right, I'm going to add some compost in that side and because uh, that definitely needs that is low I'm going to try to pour it because this side needs more give you the stats like I said on these hopefully when we edit because I need glasses to be able to see the stats I'm not gonna break up the roots on these because they're pretty maybe a little in the bottom but it's looking pretty good that coleus in here because it'll help it look fuller. Kind of like my window boxes to look kind of even. So we have this one here, even though they're not growing exactly the same. hugely impressed with this coleus. I wish it looked a little bit fuller like this one, which I should pinch it back is what I should do. That's what I'm going to do. Pinch it back. That really thickens them up. Then they focus their energy and the plant getting thicker. Last one to plant. Same thing, same plant on the other side. The crested surf fern. I believe it's called a fern. So I'm sure it's got a scientific name, but. Just a little. This side doesn't need it as much, but definitely will help re-energize the box. the best chance at 
because the more roots that can get um, started and growing in before winter, the better. off the roof so it helps us in saving so with a project like this you always want to water it in gets the dirt all settled nice around the roots want to move your compost bag before and all right and there you go project done so over time that'll just fill in nicely hopefully Within, like, even next year, this will be, you know, a couple inches higher. Next year, I'll plant in some annuals as well um, to keep it looking full. But there's three annuals that I don't have to buy. That's the goal with a perennial. All right, see you again soon.